So the topic for today's video is going to be the Hardy-Weinberg equation. And before we get right into this equation, I do want us to review just a little bit about Mendelian genetics. So if you haven't watched that video, I would suggest to go back and watch that one first um, and then come back and, and start this video. But as just a little bit of review, um, we're going to look at for example, one gene that has to do with eye color that has two forms of the gene that can exist. Okay, there's a dominant form, which I'm going to represent with capital B, and a recessive form. So the capital B form, which is the dominant form, um, is an allele for a brown-eyed, um, is a brown-eyed allele, and the little b, which is a recessive trait, is a blue-eyed allele. But since we are diploid organisms, we have two alleles for every gene. Therefore, an individual then can have multiple combinations of either the dominant or the recessive form of the gene. So a, an individual can have the two alleles both be dominant, big B, big B. And this would be what we would call a homozygous dominant individual because both of the alleles are dominant. An individual can be big B, little b, and in this case we would say that that person is heterozygous for that gene because we, he or she has one of each of the alleles. And the last possibility is to be little b, little b, which is homozygous, so two of the same, in this case, it's homozygous recessive, okay? Now, that's the genotype. Now, the phenotype or the physical appearance for both of these is going to be someone who has brown eyes because the whole point of a dominant allele is that it masks the uh, recessive allele. So this will be the only way genotypically that a person could have blue eyes is if they are homozygous recessive. Now let's look at this example and let's compare this to the Hardy-Weinberg equation that we have before us right here at the top. So there are several variables in the equation that we need to figure out what do these variables represent in a population. So this first one that we see here, p squared, okay, this uh, variable represents, and this is very important, it represents the individuals not the allele frequency, but the individuals in a population, okay, that are homozygous dominant. So in our example, this p squared would represent the number of individuals in a population that have the genotype big B, big B. Now, we see that we have a q squared variable also, and this variable represents individuals, again, we're talking about individuals, not allele frequencies, but individuals, who are homozygous recessive. So in our example, as far as our eye color um, example, we're talking about someone who is little b, little b. Now the last variable we see in this equation is this um, portion that says 2p squared and 2p, or excuse me, 2pq. And 2pq is going to represent the individuals who are heterozygous. So those that are big B, little b in their genotype. Now, let's say for example that we took a population of 100 people and we looked at all of those 100 individuals and we determined how many of them had blue eyes. So I'm going to clear our screen for us here so that we have a fresh screen. And I want us to just work a little bit of an example problem. Okay, so let's say that we look at 100 individuals and we find that 25 out of those 100 people are blue-eyed. So we know that the only way that an individual can be blue-eyed is to have the genotype little b, little b, okay? 
Therefore, we just need to decide which variable does this number represent. So 25 divided by 100, 25 people out of 100, would be 0.25, okay? And that's going to be equal to our Q squared variable because these are the number of people or the individuals that are homozygous recessive or blue-eyed in this case. So the important thing is to set that um, equal to the right variable. Now, we, we know just based on the information that was given to us in the problem that there's got to be 75 people out of the 100 that have brown eyes. The problem is we don't know out of these 75 how many of them are the homozygous dominant versus how many are heterozygous because phenotypically they're all going to have brown eyes. So we're going to have to use the Hardy-Weinberg equation to tell us how many of those 75 are homozygous dominant, how many are, are heterozygous. Okay, once we find Q squared, we can easily convert that into Q. Okay, there's another equation right here that's going to be important for us. And what this says is we have the variables P and Q. Okay, P represents, in this case, we're not talking about individuals, we're talking about the allele frequency of the dominant allele, and Q then is going to represent the allele frequency of the recessive allele. So if we go back up to our problem, okay, we know what Q squared is equal to, then we need to find Q. So Q is just equal to the square root of Q squared, which we already know is 0.25. So we need to find the square root of 0.25. And when you do that, you find out that the square root of 0.25 is 0.5. So now we know that Q, which is the allele frequency for the recessive allele, is equal to 0.5. This equation down here also tells us that P plus Q must always equal 1, which makes sense. There are only two possible alleles that can occur for this gene. So together, if you combine all of both forms of the alleles, they must equal 100%. So we can easily find P if we know Q because we say P is always equal to 1 minus Q. That's just rearranging this equation right here. Therefore, 1 minus Q, which is 0.5, is equal to 0.5. So in this example, both P and Q are equal to 0.5. Now that we know P and Q, we can come back up here and we can calculate the number of individuals that are heterozygous, and we can calculate the number of individuals that are homozygous dominant. So I'm going to use my eraser real quick just to get rid of some of this down here so we can do those calculations. So let's say that we want to find out the number of heterozygous individuals. 2 times P times Q. So in this case, 2 times P, which we calculated to be 0.5. Oops. Times Q, which we calculated to be 0.5. So we just need to do that arithmetic. 2 times 0.5 times 0.5 and we will find the number of heterozygous individuals. So if I'm doing my math correctly, about 0.5 um, in that population will be heterozygous. Okay, now we can find how many are homozygous dominant two different ways. So we know that 25 of, out of the 100 were blue-eyed, and now we know that 0.5 or 50 out of the 100 are heterozygous, so together that would be 75, which would leave 25 individuals that are homozygous dominant. Or we can use our equation and we can calculate P squared. So P squared, because it represents the homozygous dominant individuals, we say 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 equals 0 0.25, and 
and that represents the homozygous dominant individuals. So tune in and we're going to continue on in the next video with some more information about Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium.